only because of what's happening in America that I decided I need to tell this story. I think about this now, and I think I'm telling this story partly to speak up for that 19-year-old girl. Well, tonight it is nearly impossible to get an abortion in Texas. The most restrictive abortion law in the country went into effect after the U.S. Supreme Court declined to act on a request to block it. In May of this year, a young woman named Paxton Smith gave a valedictory speech asking people not to take away her reproductive rights. Starting in September, there will be a ban on abortions after six weeks of pregnancy, regardless of whether the pregnancy was a result of rape or incest. Because my story started in Texas 50 years ago, when I found out about the fetal heartbeat law that was going to be passed, I really knew I had to do something. I was angry that the decision to have a child or not was no longer mine, but it was going to be made by somebody else. The same people that vote to keep women from making their own individual choices do nothing to protect children once they're born. I grew up in a small town in Arkansas and I was one of four valedictorians. I wanted to be an actress and that's why I decided to go to Trinity University. I also was very anxious to get out of a small town. I, I did, I was one of those kids who felt like I didn't belong, that um, what I wanted to do was so much bigger than little town America. It was my sophomore year of college and I met a man in Austin and got pregnant. Women could not get birth control at the Student Health Center unless they were married. I think there was an exception that if you were gonna had a letter from a, doc, from a priest or a marriage license that you were getting married in a short period of time. I do know that when I even thought I was pregnant, I was already finding out how not to be. That, that, that I was one of the young women in the world who would have jumped off a roof to try to miscarry. There's just no way that I felt prepared or even wanted to have a baby. I barely knew this man. I went to the doctor's office. I found out I was nine weeks pregnant. And I, I remember talking, the doctor's name was B.J. Smith, and I remember saying to him, you've got to help me. I, I can't have a baby. I don't want to have a baby. And he referred me to a women's lib group um, uh, there on campus. I remember going there. I was given the name of a man named Otto Garcia, told to contact him, and he could put me in touch with a doctor in Piedras Negras. So I, I called that number. I arranged for uh, to go to Piedras Negras. It was going to cost $350, and I arranged that I would go on Saturday, November 20th. Um, neither my boyfriend nor I had a reliable vehicle, so we got a friend of ours to come and we all drove to Piedras Negras. It's about um, a five hour drive from Austin. That, um, when we arrived there that afternoon, I wasn't scared. I was taken into the office, <clears throat> examined, and then I was given a shot of some kind of anesthesia. Um, later on, I was awakened with a shot and the doctor gave me um, some pills with instructions how to use it, a number of sanitary napkins, and I was told that there would be a little bleeding. We left Piedras Negras uh, on our drive back to Austin, and I was feeling okay. I immediately went to bed, took some pills, and thought, well, maybe tomorrow everything will be all right. And about two o'clock that morning, I woke with the most awful pain I've ever had before or since. The bed was covered in blood. I woke my boyfriend up screaming, you've got to do something. I need to go to the emergency room. I think I'm bleeding to death. We drove to Brackenridge Hospital, which was only a few minutes away from where we lived on 6th Street. Um, my friend drove up and I bolted out of the car, ran into the emergency room, and I think I was screaming, you've got to help me. I've had an abortion, I'm bleeding to death. I remember they took me and put me into uh, onto some bed, a gurney. I remember a young intern leaned over me and said, there's not a doctor in town that's gonna to touch you. 
And I was feisty even then, and I said, well, get out of my face and let me die then. Um, the next thing I remember, I was uh, waking up. And so my boyfriend was there waiting, not knowing what was to happen. But the police showed up in that waiting room, and he said they were very forceful with him and said, we know you had this here in Austin, where? And he kept saying, no, no, we didn't. It was in Piedras Negras. And he, they were kind of scaring him. He, he was beginning to think they were gonna arrest him. The next thing the police officer, the second police officer said to my boyfriend is, the last one in here like that is on a slab, cool as a cucumber. Is that what America wants for its young women? We need to start talking about this. What happened to me or the fact that I had an abortion is not uncommon. It's very common. When I had my abortion here in Texas, I was like thinking, wow, I am so lucky. I am so lucky um, that it was so easy and that it was in Austin, Texas. Yes. I have several friends in high school who had abortions or miscarriages that they managed to induce themselves. Um, what I think is gonna happen in Texas, sadly, is that we are gonna revert to where we were before. If there are abortion bans, and abortion is banned where you live, and you don't have the money, and you don't have the resources to travel outside of where you live, outside of your state, outside of the country, to get a safe and legal abortion. We will essentially be forcing women to decide between doing something that they don't want to do, don't feel comfortable with doing, or, or risking their health to avoid this other option. One of the things that I originally hoped to do with this film is help you feel how terrifying it is to be a woman who is, does not plan a pregnancy. It was, an, it was a mistake to get pregnant. Whatever happened, it was a mistake. And yet you're gonna to be told that you are gonna be forced to have a baby. And I don't know if you're not a woman, if you can even understand that. Um, I don't even know how to equate it with a man because you can have sex with a woman and walk away as a man and, and not ever know if she's pregnant, not pregnant, not care. I mean, maybe you care, maybe you don't. There's nobody looking and policing you. People have to come forward and say, I had an abortion and I don't regret it. Now, there are lots of people who maybe do regret their abortion and that's fine, but I, we need the people who don't regret it, who know it's a part of being alive that you can, Get pregnant when you're not prepared to have a baby. I have no regrets. Um, I think there are many reasons why women get abortions, and I object to the narrative that this is a terribly traumatic, you know, life-scarring event. That may be for some women, but for many of us, it was um, a personal decision. Wasn't the right time. I have a son. I have a grandchild. Um, and so, no, I have no regrets. We all know someone that we love who has had an abortion. The sooner that we can see that, the sooner that I think that stigma is going to start to go away. And that's why the name of this film is No Regrets. Women have to come forward. People have to come forward and say, I had an abortion and I don't regret it. Three million women were on, you know, YouTube or Instagram or whatever saying, I had an abortion and I'm fine. What I would say to young women is that when we were doing counseling, when it was illegal in light of uh, the Texas law, we were 19, 20, 21. And so I think the, what I tell women is that you can do this too. We were fearless, young, and so are they. And so I think it's really, to see this change or to win this battle, it's gonna be the next generation, not me. I'm nervous and I'm a little bit afraid, but at the same time, I'm not afraid to speak up and stand up for what I know is right. And I know that there's a lot of women who feel the exact same way as I do. And no matter what happens, we will always be here 
fighting for our rights and nothing is final. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, it's not final and it can always change. If I could take the terror and just transfer it to you for one second, the terror of the fact that um, everything you've planned may go up in smoke because of this, I would. I am terrified that if my contraceptives fail, I am terrified that if I am raped, then my hopes and aspirations and dreams and efforts for my future will no longer matter. I hope that you can feel how gut-wrenching that is. I hope you can feel how dehumanizing it is to have the autonomy over your own body taken away from you. And I cannot give up this platform to promote complacency and peace when there is a war on my body and a war on my rights. A war on the rights of your mothers. A war on the rights of your sisters. A war on the rights of your daughters. We cannot stay silent. And that's what I want people to come out and say, I have no regrets. I have no regrets about this abortion. But that's all. <laughs>